All right, so so musically, or at least influence, was all the visual art and the poetry, really? Or was yeah. what was the influences that influenced, uh, effect, influenced those? Yes, yeah. Um... So I say, okay, we're going to make it. It's okay. I was, it was, there wasn't really a question there. <laughs> 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 Happy Halloween and welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene, including this young lady and myself. I'm Josh, and today my guest is a singer, producer, saxophonist, pianist, and synthesizer creator, as well as a visual artist. I get it all? That's about right. Right? Uh, for some reason, she hopped the pond from Wales to Vegas at some point, and her new single, Pink Flamingo, is currently out on Spotify and YouTube. Uh, review is coming soon, so make sure you click down there and subscribe so, you know, when it comes out. Please welcome to the channel, Kitty Green. Say hi. Hi! hi. First of all, thank you for getting in the spirit and dressing up. I really do appreciate it. What is this on your arm? Okay, so this is a money boa. She brought me money! Oh, hey, hey! So, I don't know if I'll accept this in Vons, but, uh, you know, you can try it's, it. It's a hundred dollar bill that, like this big. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And and then you are you are what did you already you are the ex the love of money yes yeah, so the love of money which uh, the love of money is the root of evil you know as a, according to biblical things and I quite agree with that but uh, money itself isn't you know it, it's not always so bad it does it's, make the world go round unfortunately sadly it does yes whereas I am what if Han Solo lived I'm crusty Han Solo <laughs> hey um, I will I'm looking forward to uh, once I get all my Props and everything. I'm, I'm a TikToker as well, and I, I will be doing a, a stream of TikTok. So uh, check out me on uh, TikTok if you want to see some other kind of, you know, slightly funny stuff. Real quick question. First of all, how long have you been in Vegas? I came to Vegas in March 2020. A week. I I landed a week before lockdown commenced. And you're like, well, there goes all my opportunities. Uh, well, I was only here for a month. Oh. I came for a month, from March till April, <laughs> just to escape Wales for a bit, get out of the drudgery, mm -hmm. and uh, come see the, you know, the real sun. And uh, <laughs> you got plenty of that. Oh, for sure. I don't worry, I've made the most of it. And uh, then lockdown happened. My flight got cancelled, and I fell in love with Nevada. There is a lot to love here. If yes. You're, if you're not from Nevada or, or Las Vegas, there's a lot. To love here, you know, there's way more than just the Strip, which oh, is actually, wow, yeah. actually the Strip's not even in Las Vegas, it's in Paradise. Ah. The city of Paradise, yes. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, now, once you decided I'm staying here, okay, had you, did you already have any uh, musical contacts here? Or? Well, the, the, the woman that I rented, or I was renting a room from and still am, um, Ruby Lewis, she, she's quite a big name in Vegas. She's a mm -hmm. show performer. And so she put me in touch with a few people. So I'm, I got That's so That's good. You kind young. of already had a, a, a foot in the door, so I to speak. kind of thing, that kind of thing. Because that could be very scary. Yeah, sure, yes. sure. Um, all right. Yeah. <laughs> For the Halloween episode, my father-in-law is adding extra creaks. You can knock it off. <laughs> Gonna have to get you a can of WD-40 for Christmas, I swear. Um, well, cucumbers, apparently, do the same job. What? Cucumbers do the same job. The more you know. Yeah. Wow. 
What you just literally cut a cucumber? You just cut the cucumber, rub it on. It doesn't it doesn't rust it. No, no, it does the same job as WD forty. Huh. So try that. Cucumber. Out. Just cut a cucumber and rub it on the squeaky bits. Yeah. Have to try that. <laughs> that actually leads me to um, a part of part of one of my questions, which is uh, you're a big proponent of animal rights and Native American rights and other causes mm. and charities, as well as using natural things when possible, such as mm. cucumbers on cucumbers, yeah. on squeaky bits. <laughs> What was the defining moment that started you down that path? Uh, this, this question is more about the, the, the causes and the charities. Mm. Uh, well, when I first came here, I, I met a Native American guy who basically uh, enlightened me to, to the way that Native Americans were tr have been treated, you know, since the, the settlers arrived. And uh, since that, I whew, it really changed my outlook. It completely mm -hmm. changed my outlook. And... Um, so I'm, I'm all for, you know, more rights for the Native American people and they, they're still being exploited with, um, the, like, the current thing is the Line 3 pipeline. Yes. Um, and, you know, there's still, you know, they're, they're, it's just the, the politicians and, and the, the big corporations take no, no notice uh, and they're trampling over, over you know, the uh, indigenous land and mashing up their water supplies, poisoning it with oil and shit, and I just think it's about time it bloody stops. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can't argue with that. It, mm. It's, I have a hard time myself understanding why um, a lot of the issues that we have in this world that are, you know, negatively affecting a group of people, or just the planet, or, you know, whatever, why is this a talking point? Why is this a debate? Yeah. It's like, hey, we live here. Hey, these are people. Hey, maybe don't be a dick. Exactly. <laughs> Pardon exactly. my English. Exactly. This but is it. I, this is it. I, I, this is not the platform for that, but I just want to, if, if you're watching this, and for some reason you disagree with anything we say, you're welcome to, get, you know, watch another channel. Bye-bye. <laughs> In the meantime, moving on. Um, first of all, I didn't officially welcome you to the channel. Oh, welcome. that's all right. I'm, I feel welcome. Cheers. No, no. Cheers. Not advertising, not advertising. I am. Room <laughs> 6. <laughs> oh. Man, if you watch your own Room 6 mug, hey, I got mm. two designs. Actually, no, I have uh, about six or seven designs on room6.shop. Bing. Excellent. Yes. Uh, let's talk musical influence. Okay. Now, okay. as I dug into you a little bit, <clears throat> looked at, you know, your, your Facebook speed mm -hmm. and, and various other things, I really got a sense that you have multiple genres influencing you Yes. throughout the years. And we'll, we'll dig a little into that a little bit more, but what was that first earliest musical influence you're like, I want to do that, or I want to, you know, try that for, you know, I want to get on stage. Or... Yeah, it, it wasn't so much getting on stage. I started <laughs> writing poetry from a young age. Ah, the gateway drug. Yes, <laughs> it was the poetry about... Not be. I mean, I've always been for animals. You know, I've always been an animal person. Um, uh, so I would uh, react when people were up. You know, because we lived in the country. I, I was fortunate enough to have a little pony from mm -hmm. from a, a young age. You know, so I was very into country living, and um, and I used to react when I'd hear people shooting the rabbits up in the field, and I'd get really upset over things like that. And uh, so I've always kind of thought for the animals, you know, always been big, big on animals. And so the poetry was more about nature and people not working with nature, you know, like well, the, 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 our current setup, we're working against it. We're, we're not working alongside nature as we need to if, if we want this planet to exist much longer. Um, so I, I've always been like that since a little girl. That, that's how that started off, that kind of feeling that I needed to say something. To, you know, that needed to actually share share my uh, uh, concern, my concern uh, for, for for the planet and 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 wonderful nature. And that and that morphed into writing poetry about it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and then painting as well. So painting okay. and poetry from as you know as a teenager. And my my musically my early influences. I mean, Stevie Wonder was my biggest influence, mm -hmm. and you know he's all about nature and you know like yes, secret yes. life of plants you know that was one of my best uh, favorite albums and you know 
So, so that Stevie is like one of my main heroes, main, main musical heroes from uh, since like a teenager. I've loved him. Now that you mention that, I can hear it in in your music. Mm. Um, I there was this thing. I was like, okay, well, that, there's some jazz on the saxophone, mm. and there's this, and there's that. But there was a thing, an underlying current. I was trying to nail down, and I and Stevie Wonder nails it right there. Yeah, I love him. I love <coughs> Pardon me. Love him. <coughs> Yeah. Right. yeah, I mean other influences as well. You know, in, in my teens, uh, well, like my mum and my brother got together and they they paid to rent my first saxophone for me when I was about thirteen. Mm. So I started playing sax when I was about twelve or thirteen, and um, then I started listening to people like John Coltrane. I know, like the jazz side, Courtney Pine. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was it was just getting uh, coming into into the UK as a, as a young artist and, and you know before he started taking I don't know is he big here Courtney Pine or um, I don't know if he I'm not familiar with across. him but that doesn't mean anything I'm part of part of this channel is I, I get a smattering so yeah. I touch on various genres but my th I'm more focused on the uh, singer songwriter rock and roll mm. uh, acoustic type things whereas the jazz. Um, jazz standards, Sinatra, yeah, you know, for sure. Tony Bennett. For sure. Well, that's that's Vegas. Uh, yeah, I, I sang in a in a jazz band <laughs> oh, up, up until COVID, oh. and called the Dirty Martinis, actually. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Um, but but my drummer at the time, Sean Flume, who was the very first interview on this channel, mm -hmm. he he would know, and and like his oh his happy place is like oh we're gonna do real jazz, let's do real jazz. He's <laughs> like I'll get out my brushes. So. <laughs> But no, um, <laughs> all right, so, so musically, or at least influence, was all the visual art and the poetry, really? Or was, yeah. what was the influences that influenced, uh, influenced those? Yes, yeah. Um, sorry, say, go, 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 go. It's okay. I was, it, what, there wasn't really a question there. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> musically, yeah. the earliest influence was Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder, I'm trying to think. And uh, the, I mean, my oh uh, yeah, I mean, from a little when I was a little girl, my I got an old, older siblings, an older sister and brother. I was kind of like the child that was born that wasn't expected, you know. So I was born. Hey, me too. Hey, nine, nine years after the next exactly oldest. that kind of thing. Like, oh, exactly. It still works. Wasn't what was causing her pain? It turns out she was thirty-eight weeks pregnant and she didn't even know it <laughs> yes this is it this is it so i came along and so like my older brother and sister like my, my brother was a drummer ah. so i used to uh, he used to you know we lived in this this big house and so he'd have the, his band practices in the house and um so you know music was always there my dad had an organ actually he had, he had an organ in the front room as well so there was that to have a go on um and so my brother was into heavy rock like Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Boston. Ah. So I had that from a young age and now I adore, <laughs> I still adore Led Zeppelin. I adore Led Zeppelin. Black Sabbath are okay, but Zepp, I play them right, I just I think they're fabulous. <clears throat> and Robert Plant is, is, is wonderful well, as see, That surprised me only because there isn't really any of that influence that I can t pick up in uh, Pink Flamingo. Probably Definitely not, no, no guitar. There's no like. Oh hell, no! There's no guitar. Yeah. No. But it's, no. You know, um, Pink Flamingo is your first release on Spotify, but it's not your first original song, right? Oh I have, no, 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 no. Okay. No. no. I've, I've actually got other things on Spotify, but not under I'm, I'm ah. as a band on Spotify. Now Pity that's and the Puramores. Pur, the Puramores, which. <laughs> Here's 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 the, the the promo pic right here. I thought that was a great name. <clears throat> All right, um, moving on from the earliest influences. Let's talk memories. Show memories. Is, you know whether with Kitty and the Puramores, mm -hmm. or uh, sitting in as you know saxophones with other bands, mm -hmm. or just singing, or <clears throat> whatever. Here in Vegas, or or in Wales, or I guess England really, or uh, sorry, UK. <laughs> uh, yeah. Britain is comprised of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? Not Wales in England. Wales in the sea. <laughs> um, what is your favorite show memory? What is the memory either? It could be favorite because oh, so and so went to jail, or, or, you know, oh, that was the night that the stage fell down, or whatever. Or it could be really, really something amazing happened to you. 
What, what is that wow. favorite show memory? What's the memory that you're like, check that off my little rock star list? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be performing with um, me and my brother had a band together, electronic uh, thing. That, you know, So it was just us two. And then we brought musicians in to play with us then when we went out live. And we, uh, we released a few albums together. We were called Trifle Sky. So there is stuff lurking online in SoundCloud. I, I, did, I did see Trifle Sky. Yeah, Trifle Sky is, is online. Mostly SoundCloud I, I, I'm with, uh, with Trifle Sky. Um, so we got to play Glastonbury Festival, which... Wow. Yeah, we got to play Glastonbury. So that's one of my... Yes! Yeah, because even if you're like the very, very, very first act that plays... To, exactly. To, yeah. to almost nobody. Exactly. It doesn't matter. It's a yeah. You I, play Glastonbury. And, and, yes. and plus, I mean, how, how many people? What, what was your estimate of the crowd? Uh, I don't know. Fifty, hundred. Hundred-ish, maybe. Okay, so like definitely that. not like oh, the Foo Fighters are playing, and you know, it's wall to wall people. No, 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 maybe. But yeah, still, so no, maybe I know what you mean. Like um, yeah. There was a music festival, a very short-lived, as in one year, <laughs> annual music festival here. That was um, there's a weird there's a weird spot if you know uh, kind of North Vegas area on uh, Maryland Parkway. At one point it does this and it does suddenly or there's you know this lane and this lane it goes around this grassy hill park area. It's just plopped in the middle of the street and it's the street goes around it. <gasps> by Charleston, do you mean by Charleston? Yes, I know. I and know. they had a music festival there for one year, and uh, the band I was in I was I sang in a band called The Suspense. Um, indie rock band, we got to headline it, which just means you go last. <laughs> but that was, it was to about 50 people, and I was like, play a music festival. Check. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Didn't even have to leave town. Awesome, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay, so from your favorite show memory, I want to talk about. I mean, I, this is one of those usual interview questions. Go on, yeah, yeah, yeah let's yeah, do yeah. it. Here we go, prepare yourself. <clears throat> Elevator pitch time. How would, <laughs> how would you define your musical style? Um, <laughs> well, now it's a magic wand. Uh, how would I define it? Well, this is, I mean, you could, well, you've heard the influences of jazz. Mm -hmm. Now you can hear the influences of Stevie Wonder. So that's kind of soul, jazz. Uh, how do you define Stevie Wonder? You know, you, you find, mm. Yeah, you know. Blind. I know. Yeah, like... amazing. You know. <clears throat> yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, it changes. It morphs according to musicians I'm using. Mm -hmm. uh, project I'm on. The song. Uh, I mean, the songs change anyway. Ever changing, ever influenced musical journey. Bingo. Use that. <laughs> Write that up. There you go. <laughs> Good, I need, to, I need to copy that down to describe myself, actually. It's all right. Fortunately, it's on camera. <laughs> you'll, you'll be able to watch it back. <laughs> all right, um, let's talk. Now, usually I save this question more towards the end for, like, a band, uh, because everybody has their little things they like to talk about, uh, especially drummers. I want to talk about <laughs> gear. Right. Now, now you're a, a slightly unusual case, because you are multiple instruments. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering, when you do a show as Shitty Green... What are you rocking on stage? What are you, what are you bringing besides so, the microphone? Well, is, I mean, shall I go and get my sax? If you want. Is that allowed? This is your show. Yeah. It's her so, world. I just live in it. As, as I've uh, explained, I only came for a month originally. Mm -hmm. So I just brought one saxophone with me. How many do you have? Uh, uh, back in Wales, I probably about 10. You've got a problem. I, it, but maybe. <laughs> So, this little beauty is an Art Deco Alto. It's, it's got beautiful Art Deco. Oh, it is very Isn't nice. it gorgeous? Yes. And it's, it's uh, French, uh, Jules, Jules Revan uh, Alto. Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah. Jules Revan. Jules Revan. Oui, oui. So, this little beauty is my uh, current uh, on stage accompanist. Now, is that the one you played on Pink Flamingo? Yes, it is. Okay. That's the Pink Flamingo baby. So that, and when I got here, there was no piano in um, in the place that I'm staying. But I was hiring a truck at the time, and I, I just happened to be, as you do, out driving the streets of Vegas. As you do. As you do. 
And did you, dump, uh, did you dumpster dive? <laughs> it wasn't actually. It was a perfectly beautiful piano, little upright, on the side of the road with a sheet, uh, you know, like a white sheet print saying free. Oh, yeah. It. Done that. And uh, so I, I, I doubled back the truck <laughs> and uh, I stopped by it and looked around. And there, was, there was some lovely Chinese people there that, that were from a Chinese church and they were moving premises. Oh, very nice. Yes, and they helped me on the back of the truck with this piano. So, so that was my wonderful free piano from the Chinese church people, which I'm, they blessed me so sincerely with that. I have, and it stayed on the back of the truck for three days. So I was practicing on the back of the truck for three days on it. Because there was only That's... me and another female at the house to lift it oh, off. I love that visual. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, gotta go practice. Climb on the truck. Yeah, I was on the back of the truck. It was quite fun. Oh, yeah. Take them away downtown. Walking fast. Faces pass and I'm homebound. Yeah. So so that's my little piano. She's called Black Betty and she's in our garage now. Yeah. And she's fabulous. And she's the, the piano you hear on Pink Fl Flamingo. And it's, it's if you listen, it's a very distinct kind of almost a, a tune kind of plonky sound she's yes. got a, a real I, I immediately sound. noticed i immediately noticed because i have an electric piano up in room six uh -huh. also have this very out of tune actual upright piano right here and i immediately noticed i was like that's a real piano yeah because you can hear the the plonk you can, the you plonk. can, you can hear yeah. the movements um and i, I like that i love <clears> it it's, it, it, it was harder to mix the song so I, i'm not oh yeah i'm not 100 happy about my mix the mix but i had to release it in the end so i just went and released it you know right now you did all the instrumentation right yeah and all the uh, harmonies like, yeah i could tell that was all you yeah so as far as the video goes that's all you as well right yeah yeah did you do the editing i did wow yeah. So you're like me. <laughs> yeah. Literally. It's, it's 100% kitty. One stop shop, right on. <laughs> okay, cool. That is actually, it's, is it more for the new creators out there? That can be really scary. You're like, but I don't know how, or, you know, I've never done. Try it. Do you, it. Do it. You just do it. This yeah. moment, this moment in time, mm. it is not the last moment you have to make music. It is not what defines you as an artist. Do it and then cringe later. Yeah, you know, you'll be glad you did. And our mistakes often as well. You know, the things that you don't want to do, or if you, if you, if you, things that you class as mistakes, mm. are often the way to finding a new route to do things. Some of my favorite parts of songs I've recorded have been like, I, I didn't. They weren't my favorite until about six months no. afterwards, and there was no way to really fix them and, and get cut them out. And then I realized. Actually, that works pretty good. I like that. All right. Cool. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Doesn't it happen like that? <clears throat> yep. It really does. Uh, did you name your sax? I do. You know, I don't name things you usually. Haven't, you haven't named all the saxophones? I don't name things, no. All right. No. <coughs> <laughs> the only okay. thing I named was the piano, and that's purely because one of my roommates, Paula, mm -hmm. she loves to name things. And so, I mean, the, this, this puppy that turned up at our house last week, you know, she, she, everybody, she wants to you know, get a name on it. And uh, I'm not a namey kind of person, so I named the piano purely to kind of appease Paula. Her. Yeah, yeah. You gotta name a puppy. Come on. I, I just call it little pup or little little one. I mean, unless, like I grew. Uh, part of my childhood was growing up on a farm. It was a very small farm in the desert, in the high desert. But we had at one point we had a hundred rabbits. At one point we had a cat. You know, we had a cat. Uh, cat. Cow. Cat. We had a calf. Yeah. Oh. And we had, you know, some chickens. We ran through the gamut, but you know, and and I, I would, I named, I made the mistake of naming the first rabbit we had, Susie, and she won. She was a blue ribbon winner at 4-H. Oh. And one night, I'm like, hey, what is this? It's not chicken. It's like you remember Susie? Oh no. Yeah. And that oh, was that no. was that was the education. That was the moment. Or like maybe I don't name like that's oh, different. No. And my dad would you know a, the calf. One day there was a gunshot, oh. and it was sold for you know for someone to butcher. Oh. That part of that growing up though was okay. Maybe we don't name the you don't because we don't name the, the animals that are not the. Whereas the dog, which if you. Faithful viewer, you're well familiar with Chloe, the diva dog who likes to pipe up every so often. 
she came with a whole other name, and, and then for some reason we named her. Why did hey father in law? Why did we change her name from whatever it was? The dog. Because we didn't know for sure what her name was before. Ah, uh, it was like Honey Potters. Well, we found out later that it was Honey Bun. Honey Bun, uh, which okay. is a dumb name for a dog. Come on. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Tangent. All right. Now your latest single, as we mentioned, definitely reflects your influences, mm -hmm. particularly jazz. When the solo, oh, for when, the, sure. when the saxophone kicks in about halfway through. Yeah. How much of the recording process was planned versus in the moment? Oh. Because um, there are two schools of thought generally when it comes to recording, mm -hmm. especially when it's a one-stop shop. It's all you. You either lay it all out every single step, or you kind of freeball it. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. Um... It was, it, I mean, uh, friends that uh, other friends have described it as a jam, which, which I guess it, it kind of is. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that it doesn't conform to a three minute pop release. I thought it was kind two of, and a half minutes, but yeah. It it's, it's kind of goes on quite a long time. Yeah. So uh, that in itself puts it more in like the jazz odyssey kind of framework. <laughs> right on. Jazz jam odyssey. Well, that three minute pop song thing. That isn't even so much a thing anymore. Um, back in the like the '90s with alternative, and also bands like Metallica coming out with six or seven or eight minute long songs, mm -hmm. that helped push the boundary a little bit. But I agree with you that generally, yeah. if you listen to a radio song, it's going to be about two and a half to three minutes. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the animal rights and Native American rights and all that. Mm -hmm. How much does your music and your visual art influence each other? Wait, you kind of answered that already at the beginning. I think, yeah, I think they. Well, I, I don't. You can't really separate them. I think that in, often I've met several musicians who are artists as well, and the other way around as well. You know, with, with, uh, musicians wherever the other way around is. So um, I think it's uh, they're linked. It's it's the same creative process, except one is you know is, is visual, and the other is is audio. You know. Mm -hmm. Very, I think that most probably most musicians could apply themselves to art as well, you know? I remember, um, I've done a few music videos in my time for various bands. My favorite, my, one of my happiest moments is when you think, when you're, when you're performing, because it's, you know, a music video and you do it over and over and over and over, and, and you're, you're like, you know, this is going to look good. And then you look back and you're like, hey, it worked. The, I love those moments of, of when that is... The, the planned, mm. like I planned this, it works, versus the off the cuff, you know, like, oh, oh, wow, that's a, that, wow. Mm -hmm. um, I once did a song where for some reason, I don't remember why, I, I did all the instruments except the uh, drum set, uh, and I, I did like seven different guitar solos. Wow. Yeah, I don't know why, <laughs> like seven different tracks, and I said, hey, what if, Play them all at once, and it worked, ah, and it great. totally it, and it went in with a great. few more little tweaks. But I was just like, I'll never be able to replicate that on stage. <laughs> There's no way uh, without bringing like six other people on stage with me. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to you know take chances, especially with recording, because yeah. you can you know you can redo. But also, <clears throat> it's your music. Nobody knows. Especially That's right. That's nobody, right. nobody knows. <laughs> like my favorite thing is is playing like when a band is, is you know famous for a certain song and they come out and they do it, a totally different version. Mm. And I'm like, what are you gonna say? What are you gonna do? You're gonna find this version too. That's what you're gonna do. So no, it's good. I think it's good as you said to to do songs. I mean the the songs that I wrote back in the nineties, two thousands. I you know because I'm now performing a lot on piano, like vocal piano. Mm -hmm. Um, they've now taken on, and you know, to be able to perform them in that in that setting, as opposed to like the electronica kind of setting, this completely changed the song. They become more kind of jazz, free flowing, you know, more jazzy sounding than their previous, uh, like some of them, like hardcore electronica, you know, <clears throat> dance yeah. beats and stuff. So they've morphed into something else. I think that's very that's a, a wonderful thing with with that. <coughs> With that, with music as well, is that you know it hasn't got to stay in in that one format. It can change and slip into a different genre. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's easy to they're, they're malleable. Songs are movable. So uh, definitely, yeah. Um, 
Last question. You made it. Yay. Let's pretend you do a show and somebody comes up and says, how do I be like you? If you could have, give one piece of advice to somebody starting out in music, what would it be that you wish somebody had told you? Be authentic. Be yourself. Don't copy anybody else. Uh, so many people, I mean, it's okay to have influences, um, but you don't want to end up sounding just the same as anybody else. Unless you want to do a tribute to some somebody, then that's a different thing. And, it's and Vegas, it's, after all. It's <laughs> Vegas, yeah. And it's a very good way of earning money. But there comes a point when you get tired of playing, or for me anyway, I, you, I kind of get tired of playing other people's songs, and you've got your own stuff that you want to share with the world. And that will always come across... Um, as a, a pure thing, you know, what your, your life story, the, the things that you've done, you've achieved, the things that you've been through, it all comes out in your creativity. And uh, that's why I think, uh, you know, it's, it's important to be very true to yourself and not to copy others. And that is a hard thing to do, new musicians. It is a very hard thing to do because all you know are you, your influences and the covers mm -hmm. you've learned. And, or, or maybe you've started writing music, but you, you can't help but hear your favorite musicians in it. Because mm -hmm. that's all you know. And it, it is a very hard... I, I've struggled with it for years, finding like, who, what is my sound? Who am I? Mm -hmm. And finally coming to terms with it and being like, I'm okay with this. Yeah. That's yeah. the hardest part because the, the, the hardest thing for me to hear from a friend or a family member is oh that sounds just like so and so and you're like yeah i didn't that was no because <laughs> i i've written songs where literally someone's like well that sounds like this song you're like oh, you're right you're right i can't put it on the album now crap <laughs> so all right well thank you very much for coming uh, thank, thank you, you very much for watching stick around because kitty is going to perform for us up in room six right yes <laughs> don't know what we're getting into yet but we'll figure it out in the meantime, we really appreciate you watching. Uh, definitely, of course, there's links down below. And uh, we'll see you up in room six. Temporarily say goodbye.
for out each one For out the moon pack up the sun I want to thank Kitty Green for coming by. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to be on this channel, please, I've got a link down there for my email address. Hit me up. I'll review you. We'll do an interview. It'll be great. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up there. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you know what to do. Click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time in room six. Say bye. Bye, Z. Bye. Oh, yeah. Go check out the single.